On today's episode, we're going to discuss Tim Keller's sermon series, Daring to Draw Near. And this one is specifically titled, Disciplines of Distress. And what Tim is doing here is he's going to teach us today about how to experience God when you're going through difficult times or in trouble. And he does that by using the scriptural passage, Psalm chapter 11, which was a Psalm of David. And it was written, it's thought, probably during the time of when he was being attempted to be assassinated by either his son Absalom or Saul. So you'll have to go back through some of the other books in the Old Testament, like First and Second Samuel or First and Second Chronicles to learn more about those stories, or First and Second Kings to get a backdrop of what those events were in his life that were causing him distress and that caused him to create this beautiful psalm that gives us a roadmap on how to run to God and see him as a refuge in times of trouble. And Tim points out for us here right in the very beginning in verse one, he states that we get basically a summary statement for the remainder of the psalm. So if you read this first verse, you're gonna figure out exactly what the context and the subject matter is that David's gonna be speaking to us about in this beautiful passage. And verse one really talks about how to take refuge in the Lord. And everything that follows forward for the remaining verses of the passage are basically an instruction manual for exactly how to do that. And Tim Keller's gonna outline that. He's gonna go through each section and each passage of the scripture verse by verse, which he normally doesn't do. But even in this sermon, he states that he enjoyed actually being able to break it down at this level and kind of really pull out those details of each individual verse. And he relied heavily upon Derek Kidner's commentary when putting together this passage and even reflected at one point that Derek Kidner's commentary is something that he references quite often and is his favorite commentary to go look at. So if you want to get inside the mind of Tim Keller, uh, purchase Derek Kidner's commentary because a lot of the thoughts that you see coming from there uh, filter through into Tim's teaching itself. So Tim briskly moves through verse two, again, iterating that it's probably Absalom or Saul that's attacking David and that's causing these evocative feelings and these emotions of being abandoned and being under attack. And he, there's even very vivid language in verse two about being shot at from arrows, from people in the shadows. And it's a really unique picture to kind of frame up experiences that we all go through, whether we're being assassinated, which is probably not the case for most of us, or just going through some kind of struggle that the world is providing us. And then he transitions into talking about verse three. And verse three is really kind of the heart of where Tim builds this message. And he talks about David experiencing and proclaiming that the foundations of his life are falling and failing and that civil society is falling apart. And that his advisors are tell telling him about all these problems and all these situations that he feels like he has no control of. In fact, this very much mirrors the sentiment and the emotional attitude that we see Job talking about in, the, in his book, the book of Job. And I love that this point that Tim makes clear right at this time, and that is when the foundations of our life are falling apart and when we're in this type of distress, we feel like we cannot do anything about it. We feel like there's no vision or actions that we can take that are gonna do anything to alleviate this situation that we're in. We feel despondent. And so when you feel like you're in that point in your life, you need to read this psalm because what's coming next is exactly the prescription of what you need to do to get out of this state. And there's some key understandings that you need to make. And the remaining verses, starting in verse four, are gonna lead us into how we need to be thinking and how we need to be viewing those scenarios. Tim tells a brief analogy here where he talks about his marriage. And what he states here is exactly a true reflection of what I experienced in my marriage as well. And that is when one of us is going through one of these hard times and we're feeling despairing and like we don't have the solution to whatever this, this issue is that we're having. The other one is usually balancing out with an optimistic vision and able to think clearly and provide a response to the situation that's gonna help make it better. And that role reverses and flips from time to time. And I think there's an important message and an illustration there that we need to take into account as well. And that is the value of Christian community. That is the value of a good marriage. That is the value of a good church. That is the value of surrounding yourself with other people who know who God is and leaning on them during these times so that when you're having these feelings of despair and you feel like you don't have control and there's nothing you can do about it, that they're there, they're there to pick you up and encourage you and tell you scripture so that you can kind of pull yourself out of that moment. So value those relationships, look for them, seek them, develop them, cultivate them. 
Now, one of the most important points I think that Tim Keller makes in this, in this entire sermon is he talks about what the foundations are that we build our life around. And it's when those things are being threatened that we really feel like we're experiencing trials and tribulations. And so when you're suffering or you're having a really bad day or you're going through a significant trial in your life, what is it that's being attacked and threatened that's causing you to get to that place? And is it something unsturdy? Is it finance? Is it a relationship? Is it a job? Is it some kind of temporal thing that really shouldn't have been what you've been rooting yourself in in the first place? And we all do it. We all have these things. And so God is going to expose those faulty foundations and he's going to put us in situations in, in our life where he's going to test that. He's going to test those foundations in order to shape us and, and grow us. But I don't want to get too far ahead because Tim speaks more to that point later on. But first we have to go back and look at verses four through seven. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to think about who is in charge, who is sovereign over all the events and the affairs on earth. Is it us or is it God? And that's exactly what you see in verse four, is you see this reestablishment of God under, or, or David, excuse me, stating that God is on his throne, that he is governing, that he is reigning. And having a deep, soulful knowledge of that is actually the requirement of what we need to be able to deal with these difficult scenarios and situations that play out in our life. Tim Keller tells a story about Martin Luther and his assistant or his lieutenant named, I think it's Melanchthon or something like that. And when Martin Luther, who was a reformist a teacher who broke apart from the Catholic Church and made some just massive uh, formative shifts in the way that the church is governed and the and theological systems that we utilize today, um, when he was going through those trials and, and issues, when he was being attacked for that movement that he started, his assistant was really upset about all these attacks. And he felt like if Martin Luther was arrested or if bad things were happening to him, that their whole movement would be threatened and that they wouldn't have success in that area. And so Martin Luther pulls him aside and basically says this quote, according to Tim Keller. He says, let Philip cease to rule the world. And that is, we don't need to take control of these situations. We need to rest that God has a plan and that what, he, what his agenda is, is gonna play out. And we need to take solace in that. And when we panic, the root of that is, we're trying to take control and we're trying to create our own destiny. And we think that God is the villain or that he doesn't have control. And so we need to examine that in our hearts and ask ourselves, is that how we're framing God up? As some kind of villain who's maliciously working against us or that he's too impotent to deal with these challenges that we're facing? Is that really what's going on when we're suffering and when we're experiencing trials and tribulations? And this is just one of four points that Tim is really trying to pull out of the latter end of this passage in Psalm 11. The second one being, all disasters, he states, are really examinations. And that there's two types of tests that God gives us as a loving father. He calls one the Jonah test and one the Job test. And the Jonah test is an examination of our heart to expose any sin or flaws that are in there as God is shaping us, as he's sanctifying us, he's trying to root those things out and cause us to grow into righteousness. That might be one of the things that God is doing. Or it may be the latter, which Tim calls the Job test, where God is attacking our foundations and he's testing us to ensure that we're not putting our hope in wealth, or we're not putting our hope in family, or we're not putting our hope in politics, we're not putting our hope in things that don't last and that our foundation needs to be firmly rooted in God, just like David's was. And so when David was under attack, what did he do? He had to remind himself of God's place in his heart and in his life. And that is exactly the formula that we need to follow when we're going through those difficult things too. And that's Tim's third point, And that's that only false foundations can be attacked and derailed by circumstances. So if bad circumstances are just ruining your life and you're going through all these hard things, there's the possibility that God is trying to do something unique for you to shape you and develop you because he loves you as his child. And if you're having a hard time seeing it framed up that way, then read this passage and meditate on it. Read the Psalms, read Psalm 11 in particular, 
to make sure that that message is being reinforced and in your mind and in your heart. And then lastly, in point number four, Tim Keller encourages us to see God's face. And that he points us to another Psalm of David, Psalm 16, which Tim calls the beatific vision. And that is David just trying to meditate and think about who God is. Visualize him. Visualize his goodness. Visualize his perfect character and his righteousness and his affection for you. And it's by looking at that foundation, it's by looking to Jesus, that we can be liberated from the circumstance that we find, us, find ourselves in that's causing us so much distress. And then Tim states that every tree in our lives will come down until we put our nest in the rock, just kind of building on that analogy that we see in the earlier parts of the passage or in the Psalms in general. It's all those trees in our heart, all those things in our lives that we're looking to find peace in, that cannot fulfill it. God's gonna cut those down and it's not comfortable, but he's doing it because we need it and he's doing it out of love. And so we need to accept that. And we need to understand that Jesus also took on those circumstances that he was shaken up. He allowed himself to have his foundation shaken. And this is how Tim concludes the sermon, that he allowed for that to receive, to help us to receive the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Our eternal inheritance and our eternal home in heaven with our Savior is a guaranteed promise. And that we can look forward to that and to put our hope in that place during difficult days is one of the ways in which we can come through and come out of it. Tim doesn't dismiss depression. He doesn't dismiss you know, biological, chemical things that can happen in our bodies that, that trigger negative emotions. But ultimately, the deep root of our problem is spiritual. And we have to meditate on the promises of God in order to truly heal and to be able to firmly come out of it and to establish a true and firm foundation. Just as David understood and spoke to us generations later in his beautiful Psalm chapter 11. So I hope you'll do two things. I'll help you read Psalm chapter 11, meditate on it after you watch this video, and also please go listen to Tim Keller's sermon in full titled, Disciplines of Distress, which you can find through the Gospel on Life website, which I'm not a part of. I just do these videos for fun, my own devotional edification, and I just figured I would share my thoughts as I listen to Tim Keller's sermons. But go listen to the original. And of course, go, go read the scripture and meditate on it. And that is where you'll find the true value and development and fulfillment of God that you really need. But in the meantime, if this was impactful and helpful to you as a guide to those other two references, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment. Let's continue the conversation and subscribe to the channel where you can see a whole lot more of my thoughts on other Tim Keller sermons. And I certainly appreciate you checking in today. Thank you so much. God bless.